Hello everybody. So today I want to talk about microinverters and string inverters and explain why I believe end phase as the superior technology and why microinverters to me are the superior technology. And this is a dedicated video on this topic. These are things that I've discussed in my general end phase videos, but I've never made a dedicated video on the topic. So this is this video. So first of all, Let's start with saying that really the, the residential solar market is a duopoly. Uh, you have Enphase and you have Solar Edge, right? Solar Edge is a little bigger, but it's a little more European oriented, and um, Enphase is just a tad smaller, but it has it has a, a bigger footprint in the U.S. In a nutshell, but in a nutshell, right now, Enphase and Solar Edge, they're both a duopoly. Geopolis are a thing I cover on the channel, right? If, you, if you're if used to the other stocks I have on the channel, for example, is Stoneco and Pax Securo. That's another Geopoly. iPhone and Android, that's another Geopoly. That's how a mar that's how markets work. You know, markets markets tend to become duopolistic because monopolies are not allowed. <laughs> Therefore, uh, what you end up having is a market with with two players. But when I whenever I, ha I see two players, two major players uh, in a market, I like to pick the best stock. And to me... These two stocks have a lot in common, right? So that doesn't mean that that um, Solar Edge may lose because it has string inverters, because Solar Edge has a lot of very good things going for it. There's not just the string inverters that matter uh, in an installation. The inverters, uh, sorry, not just the inverters. Everything matters in an install, right? So that's why it's a whole home ecosystem, and Solar Edge has a similar whole home ecosystem to Enphase, and more importantly, both of them have very large installer networks which we've had validation as to the value of installer networks by Tesla, because it seems like Tesla is going gonna, is gonna to start working with installers now and with third party. So that really means what gives you a competitive advantage when you are a residential uh, solar uh, provider, right? What gives you a competitive advantage is actually that installer network. But one thing that differentiates these two, like I said, is the inverter technology that they use. And that is microinverters for Enphase. Enphase pioneered the microinverter. And string inverters for Solar Edge. Solar Edge is one of many manufacturers of string inverters. And granted, they've perfected the technology. And um, their inverter is arguably better than a lot of the old, older tech type inverters that are out there, like SMA, for example. Um, but it is still a legacy technology. And I want to go over why. In my view, my humble view, microinverters are a better tech, period, than uh, string inverters. So let me get started. So, what's the first reason why I prefer microinverters over string inverters? So first of all, if you're new to the channel, really quickly, right, why do we need inverters? We need inverters because our ohms use AC and solar panels produce AC. So the key question of an inverter is, when do we do that translation of, of DC electricity into AC electricity? At what stage do we turn the electricity into usable electricity? So, end phase, um, the way it works is you place one of these tiny boxes under each panel. It's called, it's called a microinverter. And, and you place it under each panel, and it will do the, the DC to AC translation, right, inversion of electricity. It will do that at the solar panel level, right under the solar panel, right? You'll have this box right under it, and it will just turn it into AC, and it turns your DC panel into an AC producing panel, quite simply. Um, that's how it works. Now, Solar Edge, how does Solar Edge do it? Solar Edge as a optimizer under each panel um, and optimizers are needed because optimizers deal with the issue of shadows and with the issue of um, clipping, for example, even though clipping is not really an issue because now micro uh, inverters are, are very powerful now and, and, and you know, Microinverters from two years ago, you still had an issue of, of clipping where a microinverter was not powerful enough to handle the solar panel, but that's not true anymore. That's absolutely not true anymore. Today, both optimizers and microinverters can handle a modern panels. Um, but but Solar Edge, in order to turn that electricity from DC to AC, what they will need is they will need both a single phase string inverter that you typically will have in your garage, a string inverter, so one string with with multiple panels on it, on it like dozens of panels on that string. And then they will also need 
optimizers to deal with shadows because one of the main issues with, with string inverters used to be shadows, right? Um, and it used to be that if you have, have uh, one part of the string, so like two or three panels out of a whole system that have some shadow from a tree, then, you, then, then your production gets reduced to the lowest panels, to the lowest producing panels. So that's why um, companies like, like Solar Edge have introduced optimizers at the panel level, which manage panels individually so that you don't lose power for the whole system whenever there's a little shadow, you just lose power for one panel. So again, string inverters have evolved, they've become a little bit better too, and, and now they have features that look like micro inverters. But nonetheless, and this remains the problem, it's like, why would you? Why, why would anybody want to have both steps? I mean, it seems crazy that because these optimizers are, are, are expensive, right? Granted, and th these are similar, right? These are these are, these are 500 watt DC. Both are 500 watt, 500 watt DC. These are similar. Uh, th these these add an extra step if that makes any sense because you still need to install this bulky piece of equipment in your garage typically that's the string inverters and the installer is still going to have to install under each panel an optimizer while they could entirely do away with this step the step of installing this this string inverter they could entirely do away with this step by just picking end phase and micro inverter. If you just pick micro inverters, you can entirely do away with this two step process. So it saves a lot of time to, to the installers for them to install end phase. It saves them a lot of time. And if you add over issues, for example, um, the, the, the fact that Many electricians are very comfortable working with AC systems and AC coupled systems, and they're not as comfortable with working D with DC. That adds an over an, an over plus for end phase, right? It's easier on installers. Also, micro inverters they tend to be uh, not micro inverters, string inverters they tend to be lighter than they used to be. They're still very heavy. So if you're an installer and what you do all day is install systems, you're going to value a lot your back and not having to lift heavy string inverters, and you're gonna want to do something lighter, which is which is the end phase system, which is just these tiny boxes. So from a first principle perspective, to me, this step doesn't make sense. We should just do this step. It just makes much more sense because if you're going to have an optimizer under each panel, you're just doubling the amount of work and, and, and that doesn't make much sense to me. So anyways, that's the point number one. It's quicker. It's quicker to install. It's easier for installers. There's no unnecessary steps. I think that's the reason number one micro, why, my, why micro inverters are better. Now, okay, reason number two, and this is this is more of a, of a user oriented reason of a, of a you know, the, the homeowner reason. Um, and phase doesn't have a single point of failure, which means which means that if, if one microinverter fails, you don't lose your electric production. You just lose one twenty third of your electric production. While in the case of end phase, if the string inverter fails, you lose the entire production. You lose it all. You lose it all. You have to wait until an installer comes and either fixes or replaces the solar edge system, right? You, you have to wait until someone comes to either, either fix it or replace it, right? So you don't have a problem, of course, if it's an optimizer that fails, but since the, the inversion happens at the string inverter level, if that fails, everything fails, the whole system fails. And so that can be very, very, very problematic, especially because you may know that when things fail, they always fail at the wrong time. And you know, uh, any type of appliance, they always fail at the wrong time. It's never the right time. So anyways, so that's that's a, that's a big issue. And of course, as, as, a, as, as a solar is sold um, with energy independence in mind, and a lot of installers will say, oh, and we sell solar because you look, you have energy independence, you're not, never going to lose power. Well, if, if, energy independence is a key reason why someone would get solar well then end phase clearly clearly wins because you don't have a single point of failure which which i think is important okay reason number three the warranty right the, the, the warranty and um in my prior video i went through the general cost and really the, the cost is roughly the same today it is, it is roughly the same maybe maybe a thousand or two thousand bucks more for end phase on the system on a system but but not that much it's barely the same cost today yet end phase you have a 25 year warranty versus a 12 year warranty for solar edge so 
the warranty and 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 it is less important the warranty that than you know the redundancy i believe redundancy is better like it's like warranty is one thing but warranty you, you could you could still have a system failure and you still have to call someone in to fix it right redundancy is better because you're, you're guaranteed that your whole system doesn't fail with redundancy so warranty is, is kind of a, a secondary argument but 25 year warranty for for Enphase, 12 years warranty for Solage. This means that Enphase is very confident in its product, and Enphase is very confident that the product is not going to fail over a 25 year period. Um, and right, Solar Edge is not as confident because otherwise it would be giving a 25 year warranty. Um, and also, if you go into the the details of how these products are made, um, you know. String inverters, they tend to be an older technology. They, they, they tend to be closer to the manufacturing of an appliance, while consumer, uh, while, while micro inverters are closer to consumer electronics in the way they are manufactured. So, so that's why so, Solar Edge products um, here only have a 12-year warranty, and and it's it's not nearly as long, right? And phase is more than twice as long as far as the warranty goes. Then. Important point as uh, as people get electric cars because if you believe if you believe electric cars are going to get adopted, which which I believe so, I believe electric cars are going to be you know eighteen to ninety percent of a market by twenty thirty. That's my general belief um, about about electric cars. And even if it doesn't happen back then, governments have already said they're going to ban gas cars. So to me, that's going to happen. And so what that means is that. Having an expandable system is very important because you may get a system for your home that's, that's, that's just right for your home and then you end up getting an electric car. And so what if you get an electric car? Maybe you want to expand your system, add a few solar panels in order to um, meet your new electricity needs, which now have an electric car. It's very easy with Enphase to add solar panels. So you can just add a few solar panels very, very easily uh, upgradable and you can upgrade with as few as one solar panel right with solar edge you can't do that with a string inverter system you can do that all you can do with a string inverter system is double the size of the system now not all not all homeowners can double the size of their system not all homeowners have the money or the will or desire to double the size of the system Right? And the d doubling the size of a system is not what may be needed depending on the needs of a homeowner. So the fact that you, you can have some granularity in the expansion of your system is, is very, very um, great for Enphase in my view. And this is something that will be lacking with string inverters going forward and with going, going on with the technology of string inverters. Okay? That's, that's kind of how I feel. But a last big advantage, reason number five, as to why, and uh, and phase in my view in better is better, and microinverters are better, is that you can manage your solar panels individually, and so and so to me this is a big deal because if you have a solar install, you may know that for example sometimes you need to clean your panels. You may have panels that are more dirty than not than others, and you just get the water hose and you know clean them. That's one thing that you need to do. Well. With Enphase, you can do that very easily. You can know which panel is performing the best, which panel is not performing the best. You can individually track each of your panel. And this, this, this gets more important even in the case of a panel defect because that, 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 that may happen that you have a panel that is defective. Um, it's very easy to know for you which panel is defective with a microinverter because you'll be able to tell, oh, this microinverter is not, not working as well. So you can know full well which is good, which is not good. You can't really do that with string inverters. Another thing is that because you get to know each panel on your roof in great depth, it's not only can you optimize your production, but you can also do other things to increase your production. So like, for example, you know, maybe you have a tree in your yard that needs to be trimmed and you can know exactly how to trim that tree, or how to how to cut down a few branches because you have a production of each panel and you have a picture on your roof of, of your app and you know exactly which panel is doing well, not doing well and for what reason. So, so it allows you to increase the efficiency of your entire solar system because of this individual tracking of solar panels. Each panel becomes its own system. And that's reason number five, why microinverters are much better in my view. And let me finish with this. It's a bonus reason. This is a bonus reason because it doesn't really impact um, the homeowner, but it impacts the company. <clears throat> so this is a bonus reason. So we know that until 2033, we have 
in my opinion, crazy subsidies. These, these subsidies make their, they, are, they are way too high in my view, but that's okay. But as a taxpayer, I feel upset because they're very high, these subsidies. Uh, but we, 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 so we have the IRA bill introduce the manufacturing product tax credit. Um, understand a big check. This is this is this is, is going to be a big a big check. Um, and so, in, in USA made microinverters, actually, if you look, they receive seventy percent more money per watt than USA made string inverters. So if you look if you look at the the, the system how the system is set up. Um, the, the, the government, the IRA, is essentially choosing microinverter as a better technology because it is paying much more for microinverters than it is paying for string inverters, right? And so that has created a great incentive for Enphase. And, and Enphase, you may know it with their partner Flex, they've already opened two manufacturing facilities in the United States, and they have planned to open more of them. And so open, uh, Enphase is investing heavily in the manufacturing in the U.S. And let me tell you why they're investing heavily in, in, in the manufacturing in the U.S. Now, of course, you could say this is, this is a selling point because most inverters are made in China. Um, and so to, to some homeowners, having a U.S.-made microinverters may be a selling point. Um, and that's 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 fine. That's a plus of, of micro. That's a plus of Enphase's microinverters. There you go. It's a plus. It's one more plus. But but the, the, the point is, um, if you if you look at how much money they're going to make with this, it's absolutely insane. Um, so they're planning right now to have a capacity to produce 18 million microinverters per year in the United States. In the United States, which would which would mean that they would manufacture enough microinverters for about one million new homes each year, you know, and when I tell you in my prior video that, that the product adoption of solar is going to be insane, I really believe it's going to be insane. I mean, if they're setting up capacity for 1 million homes, we're going to see these things everywhere. The point is, let's assume though, and they pay 11 cents, they pay 11 cents per watt. So let's assume if you, if you take the higher end microinverter right now for end phase, it's, it's, it's an 480 watt AC uh, microinverter, it's called the IQP. And if you look at the, the trajectory of microinverters, you know that year after year they get way better. Like they get way better. Like, are we gonna get a microinverter that does 800 or 900 watts by the end of the 2020s? Yes, in my mind, no doubt. So they inevitably will be better, and we'll have more watts packed into them. It's the nature of consumer electronics. Microinverters are much closer to consumer electronics than, than say, uh, uh, bulky appliances. So let's just imagine that their best microinverter currently, the, the, the IQ8P. Let's imagine that 18 million of those, 18 million of the, the microinverters they manufacture in the US are IQ8Ps. So we do the math, right? 18 million per year times 480 times 11 cents. That's a $950 million check per year. And so, you know, I, I don't know. I guess the, the, the youth would say mic drop. There's nothing, there's nothing more, there, there's nothing more to be said about that. Like it's, it's, it's just going to be, it's just, it's just going to be insane. This is a company that has a 17 billion dollar market cap. And my simple back of a napkin math tells me they're going to get close to a billion in subsidies. Um, just, just for making those, just for making those. So, so anyways, this stock for me is, is, is really a no brainer. My view is that they will open way more facilities, you know, wait for it. Will they have six? Will they have eight US manufacturing facilities uh, by 2025, 2026? I mean, I believe so. I believe so. They have a very strong incentive to do that um, because because this is this is a poorly designed subsidy um, that really benefits Enphase. So as a shareholder, I'm not going to be against it. Um, but as a taxpayer, I am against it. So anyways, uh, this was not investment advice. This is just entertainment. I hope you were entertained. I appreciate your likes. I appreciate your subscriptions to my channel. And uh, if you can follow me on X, I really appreciate it as well. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.